We can take the presentation of the energy saving plan by Jay Booman to the top of the agenda, out of order. So do I hear a motion to do that? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, Mrs. Booman. Good evening. As you know, we are trying to get our green <laughs> communities designation. And we have two criteria that we need the school committee to approve. The first criteria is the energy efficiency policy. Um, or energy reduction policy. And I believe you all have a copy of that? Yes, we, we do. Most likely do. So it's the Energy Reduction Action Plan outline. And basically what it does is it gives um, an outline. We have, once we become a green community, we have five years to reduce our energy usage for the town by 20%. And this plan, basically kind of says how we intend to do that. We've had um, an energy audit by a company called B2Q, which was a state-sponsored energy audit at Berlin Memorial. We had a second energy audit at Berlin Memorial by Reliance, no, Guardian, I'm sorry, Guardian Energy Management. Um, and we have also had SES, Sustainable Engineering, which was part of the ARRA EECBG grant. Um, and they're the people who did a, <laughs> they're the people who did a very in-depth study of the heating system and also did some energy efficiency studies and said that you were at the 40th percentile um, in energy efficiency for schools in this they compared it to a bunch of um, similar schools um, the region um, and the <coughs> size of the school so I'd just like to show you all a little chart. We use something now called Mass Energy Insight, which is a program that the state sponsors. And we put the, the, the electrical usage gets put in automatically. We put in the oil and gas. And this is buildings to target diagram. And you will see that the buildings that you want to target are in the upper right quadrant. And Berlin Memorial School stands out along with this municipal building also. So what I would like to ask you to do tonight is to approve this energy reduction action plan outline and um, approve it and give me a letter that says that you approved it. <laughs> so. What it does is, it, it, uh, as I said before, it's a um, plan that kind of outlines how we'd reduce energy. Um, if we become a green community, designated green community, the minimal grant that we are eligible for is $130,000. And I think that Berlin Memorial <laughs> is probably one of the first buildings in the town that we would like to focus on. Now tell us what that would entail as far as the accepting the plan. What are we obligated? Um, um, you're not obligated really to do anything. Um, all you're saying is that you will, I don't know, maybe cooperate with the town to, to reduce the energy in the school. As we apply for a green community, we're saying that as a town, we are going to try to reduce our energy usage by 20%. And the green community committee, I mean the energy committee, would probably target Burl Memorial first. Because you are such energy hogs. That's hard. <laughs> Pardon me? That's hard to believe, isn't it? Spoken like a true board of selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> HVAC system, if you look at all these reports, there are so many pieces of it, as Courtney knows, that don't work, that, you know, things are stuck open, or there's thermostats that say it's 30 degrees out when it's really 50 degrees. Um, so, 
Are there any ramifications if we don't get to the 20% within the five years? I asked that question too. Um, no, because they said that what they're going to do is, you know, every year you have to file a report and say how far you've gotten. And if you haven't gotten significantly, significantly towards that goal, then they would would call you and talk to you and say, you know, can we help you get going? Yeah. Adequate yearly progress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so this would allow us though to get grants from the state to assist with a lot of the repairs, upgrades, things like that, if we got the Green Communities Act, is yes. that correct? And we're also eligible for um, national grid incentives, which was something I was going to talk to Courtney about, because I think the boiler may or may, may, have, may have an incentive attached to it. Mm. We need to talk to the national grid representative. There's a lot of money floating around out there, and it would be nice if we could grab a little of it, free money. Well. There's paperwork attached, but <laughs> right. But it's mostly free. So, I mean, I think. Well, one of the things that we saw when we put all these numbers in was that your electrical usage. I think I said this in the email. Since we redid the lights, your electrical usage went down five percent since that point. But your um, oil usage has steadily been increasing, and that's even when they normalized the data for the weather. So. I don't know. Well, I think that if I threw the chair, I think the timing of it is, is, is excellent because, I mean, we're going out for the roof survey, uh, you know, this, this, this spring, summer, so to speak, whenever mm -hmm. we can get, get that together. And, uh, and obviously we'll come up with that roof survey. So I think that is excellent timing, which I think would support the town's initiative toward this because you could, even though it's already in the budget, you could, you could say, hey, we've already started to make progress in terms of studying our roof and the issues that we have with it. And, and I read through the report and a lot of these issues in the uh, energy efficiency project report that you gave us, a, a lot of them are roof, are roof related. Roof issues, yes. A lot of roof related issues, flashing and all kinds of uh, issues that are in there. So, I mean, the timing of it uh, might, be, uh, might be really good. And then particularly if you're next year, depending on what we find out about the roof, that might be a good opportunity for the town you know, to pursue that uh, with, with the state or the federal government. I'm not sure what the funding source here is. State funding. State yeah. funding yeah. Uh, at that point in time. So it might, it might be just you know, really good timing to get, to get a lot of that done. Yeah. Yeah. I saw some of the other things we already have in state statute, anyhow, like the idling of the buses and yeah, that's, things of that. Yeah. that that's, we'll get to that one. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. This is just criterion three, which is that yeah. I need the school committee to accept <laughs> the energy reduction plan. But actually it has to be signed by. Whatever they vote. The Board of Selectmen yeah. voted that they hereby adopted the Town of Berlin Energy Reduction Plan for Criteria 3 of the Green Communities application as presented by the Berlin Energy Committee, which is for tonight me. As long as the capacity to, to, to do the work is, is not uh, dependent as for the chair, up on the school committee to come up with that out of their operating budget. No, right. no. Nope. This would all be grant money from the state. Was there another question that you had? had to that, make? Was, that, that, that was that was basically my, that, it. Yeah, the capacity. Okay. You know, to, to to do that, I mean, you know, financially as well as in terms of personnel. Right. To implement the plan, because you know, we don't have a facilities manager, so we kind of do this through the business office and the superintendent and our part time. Head custodian that we share with with, with Boylson, you know, back and forth. So as I meant by capacity, I mean there's only so much capacity to to get uh, to get this right. done. Right. Well, we actually can use 10% of the grant for administration, so you could actually hire someone to to do some of the paperwork and other stuff. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I just think this is the way a lot of towns are trending, especially with school systems. And I think we should promote this and we could make it educational and have an education piece along with it, if that's what Carol would like to do with a lot of the work that we're doing. So I would support this. Sounds good to me. Okay. So is there a particular motion that needs to be made? I think you just need to make a motion that, um, that you will adopt 
the Town of Berlin Energy Reduction Plan for Criteria 3 of the Green Communities Application Designation. Can I do that? <laughs> 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 Did we want to add anything as long as it doesn't? Um, well, I mean, if you wanted to, just to cover the bases, if you wanted to add, you know, subject to, you know, uh, personnel capacity that, that we have and uh, funding resources to implement the plan. With that, with that. We're not going to force anything on you. If you can't do it, you can't do it. We can certainly work on this building, <laughs> which has its own issues. Because that may not work as far as getting us as a green community. Well, we, we have change. five years. Well, no, I mean, it, to be designated as a green community, if we put that stipulation in the motion, I, is that going to? I don't know. I, I, I would just rather have the wording that they gave us that we need to have. Okay. You could make the motion, and then you could send a separate letter if you want to, if you felt more comfortable to the board selectman just saying, no, we're, obviously we're all on board with all this, but please understand, you know, just mm -hmm. we want to feel comfortable with subject to our capacity to handle what's coming down the line in the next, the next So the letter days. would go to the selectman? Chairman, well, I'd say to the chairman of the board selectman, yeah. Okay. Well, this letter well, needs to be addressed to the green community. Right, right. Right, I mean, yeah, there that was that another separate letter. Okay. okay. So you're comfortable with the motion? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Now, the other criteria that involves this system is that we have to have a fuel efficient vehicle policy. You don't actually have any vehicles, so it's kind of a, you know, but if you ever got any vehicles, you would, by adopting the fuel efficient policy, you would be. Um, the non-exempt vehicles, it says, in, in the event that at any time Berlin acquires non-exempt vehicles as part of its fleet, the community will adopt the green community's fuel-efficient vehicle policy, which simply talks about it has to meet a certain number of miles per gallon, the various types of vehicles. So the buses are not considered our vehicles? No, because we don't own them. Okay. The contract out for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've read the motor vehicle policy. I mean, it, it looks fairly benign to me. Yeah. We're going to get a pink caddy for somebody or something uh, someday. You never know. A pink Prius. Yes. Prius. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's how I put it. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I, I did see that you have two anti idling policies, which are fine. I can use those to send them along. You've already adopted that. Yeah. Is there any questions? Is there a particular motion that we need to make for that item? Um, let's see. I think I sent a simple letter. Yes, you did. Which is a simple letter from the state. Um, that's that's not for the energy reduction plan, right? No, that's the, that's one letter that you sent from right. the superintendent of schools. Uh, the other one? Let's see. I have one signed by the board of selectmen at a public meeting of the Berlin, whatever you call yourself now, um, school, school committee. committee. Well, I saw the stuff I saw, and the other one all had Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee. Union 60? Union 60. It didn't have Berlin School Committee on it. Oh, the policy? Yes. Right, because they're promulgated because Union 60 covers mm -hmm. covers the uh, elementary, but okay. in this case it would be Berlin. So School at a public committee. meeting of the Berlin School Committee held on May 9th. May 9th, the, bo uh, what was the, board selectmen? <laughs> the Berlin School Committee voted to adopt the attached fuel efficiency policy. Okay. Can I come to the superintendent, uh, Judy? And you could sign this, Superintendent. Thomas signed it for. It's it's oh, just. Oh, the entire policy. 
Well, it's the fuel efficient. It combines them all into one. I need to see the wording of it. Did you want to see what I'm saying? Okay, it's a couple of both the school news the one too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it has to cover yeah, both. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the motion on that, Chris, would be that the school committee authorizes it designates the authorized superintendent to sign off on that policy. Do I hear that motion? Mm -hmm. So to yeah. sign off on the fuel efficient vehicles policy for the town of Berlin. Mm -hmm. And for the energy. I mean the superintendent to sign. Yes, for green communities. That's what it is. What was it? Sorry. Sign off. First, you said the fuel efficiency policy. Yeah, the fuel efficiency mission vehicle policy. Okay. For I guess it would be for the green communities. Green communities. So what is it? The motion we authorize Dr. DeBruyne to. Yes. Okay. Superintendent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he has to sign. Just on would you like a copy of that? I have it in the copy. I think I actually no, have a copy of the packet. Cheryl yeah. gave us a huge <laughs> packet. I felt that. It's very good. <laughs> I wondered all these, what these staples are all for. So did you guys make that motion? Did I hear that one? motion? No. Um, so I moved. Yeah, okay. That okay. motion. Okay. We have two on the table. We authorize right. Dr. DeBrule. Right. That's right. Will that will that That's do the for this? One. As long as you write me a letter that says what it needs to say and he signs that, I'm happy. Okay. So we're authorizing Dr. DeBrule to sign off on the policy for green. Whatever the letter says. I don't have the letter in front of me, but fuel. The uh, this one. This, this. The so fuel right. efficiency vehicles policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nikki, so moved. Yes, second. and you seconded. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Okay. <laughs> Are you in a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. Aye. So if you give that back to me, please. <laughs> that I'll sign it off and I'll send the original to Judy and we'll keep a copy for our records. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We'll get out. We'll get out to you right away tomorrow. Yeah. I have Nikki and you. Well. Which, well, which thank you, you very I? much. Yes. <laughs> and I will okay. not. I will I'll, not I'll overload say Courtney by saying that the entire HVAC system is just right. Do that right into that next motion. Right. And you and you want me to draft this letter too, and right? The sample letter they have. Um, right. And the first. Part Burlington School Committee adopted the Town of Berlin Energy Reduction Plan side. for Criteria Three of the Green Communities Application Excellent. Designation Excellent. presented by the Berlin Energy okay. Commission. So we'll put that on official letterhead. Yes. That's the and we'll that sign it. We'll send a copy to you. And you also have to send one saying that you adopted no, the energy efficiency policy. Yeah. That's yep. what I mean. Right. Okay. Yep. So two yes. letters okay. and yep. well, a return that. of the. Okay. Great. I missed anything. One for the, the right. one for the Thank you very much. Vehicles. So we do not need the second motion that we made, which was to support the policy for efficient vehicles. That's we the one we started just... to make that one, and then we changed then it to authorizing him to, to sign. Okay. So, well, by authorizing him to sign it, then you more or less stopped it. Same thing. Okay. Okay. So that's why. Okay. So that's so why I was saying mind. we need two letters and the policy return. Right. Okay. And, okay. And just so, yeah. Eileen, we, we did vote that um, the Borough School Committee voted to adopt the town of a Berlin Energy Reduction Plan for Criteria 3. Yes. Yep, yeah, that was the first okay. one. We Good. have that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll have a school that is warm when it should be warm and cool when it should be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our energy committee. <laughs> you might be retired, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Judy.
So is the committee? Okay. So moving on. Um, <clears throat> we're um, actually the first thing I wanted to do after since Judy's presentation is over is to thank the administration and the town officials and voters at town meeting for their support. <laughs> Get over there and move that camera. Who's that one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like later. Is it pointing at me? Don't ever try to hide from surveillance, Chris. <laughs> Apparently, I don't get that, do I? <laughs> All right. I just wanted to thank everyone for um, their support at town meeting uh, of our school budgets and our warrant articles. Is this camera on? Is the camera on? Are you on camera? I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Good. And we're moving on. We're in the process of um, signing payroll and payable warrants. We have a consent agenda, which includes a letter for, a, oh, wait a minute. No, the, the consent agenda, boy, am I screwed up tonight, um, has the April 11th open session meeting minutes. Um, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Um, does anybody have anything to be said on those minutes? Okay, and I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries unanimously. Um, now, we've got communications. Correspondence from Bodich and Dewey, who takes care of our Reed Tyler scholarship, um, which we will address down under the business items. But I did want to tell the committee that when Dorothy Dimitri, the trust officer for many years um, for the Reed Tyler Trust Fund, called to see if it was all right to send this communication to my address, she also wanted to let me know that she will be retiring in August and that it has been a pleasure to work with the Berlin School Committee on behalf of um, the Retiree Scholarship. And she's sure that the next trust officer will do a wonderful job in helping us to take care of this scholarship. So, um, petitions and audiences relating to items on the agenda. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. The communication itself um, just says that this year the sum of $12,175.60 is available for grants to students, which is based on the total return concept of 4.5% of the account's market value averaged over the prior 12 quarters. And she will await the list of names and schools of the students to whom these grants will be issued. Thank you. Um, petitions and audiences relating to items on the agenda. Oh, good. Okay, we'll move on to reports. Is there a CPAC report? Nope. Okay. Uh, superintendent report. Okay, Madam Chair, first I just want to report for the benefit of the public, I mean, because you've heard a lot of this before, but just on the building uh, committee, uh, the project is uh, on schedule and uh, within budget. Uh, and if anyone's been driving by the uh, new school lately, you can see, like, significant exterior work being done on the building, and it's really shaping up uh, really, really well. Uh, the school building committee is meeting tomorrow night at 5 o'clock uh, to go into the building to take a look at the... Uh, way that the auditorium uh, concrete, uh, it was, there's an issue there, the way it was poured, and the CTA, the construction company, uh, has a remedy that they'd like to show us uh, tomorrow evening around 5, so the whole school building committee will be going to that meeting to look at the remedy that they are proposing to see if it will fit um, our criteria for acceptance uh, or not. So uh, that is uh, actually been really only the one issue really that's, that's come up during this whole construction uh, uh, project uh, in some places it's off a couple inches, and we're not sure if the re if the remedy can address that or whether it be pleasing to the eye. But they have mocked up one one row, so we will we will go see that from a number of different angles uh, tomorrow at uh, five o'clock, and then have a discussion about whether we will accept the uh, CTA's remedy for that. If not, I mean the 
the uh, ultimate remedy would be to uh, basically report. So we'll, uh, we'll be uh, doing that uh, tomorrow evening. Okay. Um, and also we have a, on, the, on the agenda for the school building committee, there is a request from the Tahanto Regional uh, Committee for, uh, uh, for uh, cost, for funding for out uh, of contingency funds for approximately $70,000 for move-in cost to move us from the old high school to the new high school. As you know, the way it's set up right now, we basically have about one week for Christmas vacation to go from the old high school to the new high school. And uh, that's not something that we're going to do with uh, three custodians, no matter how much volunteer help we have. So uh, this will help us. Uh, we assume this will pass tomorrow night, uh, and uh, then we can develop very concrete plans on how we're going to handle that move during during that during that week. So uh, we'll be going in and bid specs obviously for that too. I thought that was there an idea something floating around that I was hearing something about like. Um, the prisoners helping out or something like that because school will not be in session? Well, that, that's a possibility. We actually uh, we wrote that letter and sent it to uh, Sheriff Evangelitis, uh, I hope I said pronounced his name correctly, yes. uh, today. As a matter of fact, we okay. sent that out. Um, we have to be somewhat judicious on that, you know, obviously in, in terms of, uh, um, and we've worked very well with what was the county jail before, and they've done a lot of work for us uh, cons consistently, and it's been a good situation. We basically provide them lunch. Mm -hmm. Nice lunch. They come in and uh, they've actually found it very, uh, very pleasing to work in the community. It's been a pleasure to have them. Uh, but once again, we're there to minimize any contact between them and, uh, and students. And of course, that week there are no students in, in the building. So yes, we've written a letter. We've asked okay. the possibility for assistance uh, during that week. Okay. We'd fall right up on it. Okay. okay. Last day of school. Uh, as you know, this has been a very unusual winter. Um, in some cases, it's, in most cases, it's been fairly mild and we haven't had really any major issues. But the ones we've had have been some really, some real whoppers. Uh, if you remember back on August 29th, we had Hurricane Eileen, seem, Irene, seems like a thousand years ago, but we canceled professional development that day because the person that was coming in, trees fell on her car and her husband's car and couldn't get out. And other people had problems getting here too in terms of faculty, so we, we did reschedule that at another later date. And then, of course, we couldn't get to school because the roads were just clogged up. No power one day, and then the roads were just impassable the other day. So obviously, that's where most of our delays have come from. We actually only had one real official snow day, so to speak, that was on, on March 1st. The rest are all due to that, that freak uh, October, November storm. So for Verlin Memorial, uh, the last day of school will be June 22nd. And uh, that's the official day, and uh, I assume uh, Carol will put that on the website, uh, just reminding parents that that is the last, last day of school. It just so happens to coincide with Boyles Elementary this year, too. Usually they're off a day, but this year they, they're the same day. Uh, anyone's interested also, Tahanto, June 25th is the last day of school at, for students uh, at Tahanto, and June 26th is makeup day, makeup exam day uh, for students, and of course the last day for teachers. So that's what we have. Okay, great. Uh, incoming superintendent, uh, Nadine, uh, incoming superintendent-elect, Nadine Ekstrom, actually was here last week uh, at a, an appreciation luncheon uh, for teachers. Uh, she was invited by, I mean, this is wrong, Carol, please stop me, well, uh, parents uh, to come here. So uh, pleasantly surprised to walk in and see her here, but I think it was a nice, uh, it was very nice. Got to meet, uh, obviously, the faculty and uh, a lot of parents and uh, some community members. So uh, spent some time with us. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, yesterday I was I spent some time with her also at a Masters Association Regional School Committee meeting. We chatted a little bit more about entry exit plans, her entry, my exit, and uh, she'll be coming on board on. Uh, she'll be here on Thursday, March. I'm uh, sorry, Thursday, May 24th. Uh, and she's going to tour the schools on that day. So uh, we will probably uh, start off first thing in the morning at the uh, central office introducing her to people, or the central office people, and then we'll probably slip down to Boyle's Elementary from there, and then we'll go over to the region, and maybe Berlin. I know you have your oar in the water for her to be here, but she can't be in three places at one time, but uh, you already saw her anyhow. So. Uh, <laughs> show our building, though. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so we'll be making the rounds all that day. So uh, she's very uh, looking forward 
uh, to meeting uh, uh, faculty people, and I'll be interesting introducing her unless the school committee wishes to. That's it's up to you to members of the uh, of the uh, uh, down town hall, you know, uh, town clerk, uh, town treasurer, whoever happens to be in, we come by. Same with Boylston. So uh, that'll be a full day, and then we'll have some little discussions during the course of the day about her her uh, full time uh, entry uh, into the into the district. So it's uh, going well, going very very well. So uh, that's what's happening. Uh, on that day. And that concludes uh, my report for this evening. Well, actually, I was going to let the committee know, down under comments from the school committee, there was that, you know, just a quick update on the FAC meeting that I went to on Tuesday, and I happened to mention that the new superintendent would like to come and meet the town officials. Mm -hmm. And they let me know that there is going to be on the evening of May 24th a town officers meeting um, because the uh, Highland Commons I guess is asking to renegotiate the um, mitigation, the mitigation um, package and the selectman I guess would like some input from town officials and I didn't know whether she might be Available to come a little before that meeting. So it could be here. It'll yeah, be here. At town hall. Right. I, I can inquire. I, I don't know what, you know, what your evening schedule is. Seven. Seven. So it would be before that. If she would like to do meet them then, otherwise, you know, Monday through Thursday, I think everybody's here till two. Oh, we would definitely swing by on the 24th, too, during, during the day. Okay. We would definitely make that. Okay. Well, I will she, mention you know, that leave to Leave it her. up to her if she yeah. wants to come. I had, I don't if she had, had doesn't get a chance to meet people. Okay. We're hoping they'll all show up to talk about the mitigation okay. package. And she's going to be out in June, too. Yeah. So she has a number of days uh, in June, vacation days in June, where she will be out in the district. But I think she wants to make a concentrated effort to, to see the faculty before school is dismissed. Yeah. Okay. Um, Director of Financial Services report. Courtney. Um, <clears throat> first, I have a report for you this evening, and actually, it's um, it was presented to you, I think, about a month ago. Yeah. Um, regarding the school lunch program. Um, oh, actually, that's down in votes. Sorry. We'll do that down in votes. Well, no, I actually we would we would do it both in both areas, I guess, because the vote is actually afterwards. Um, apologize for that. So we'll first take up the agenda item summary that I have regarding the school lunch fee increase. When I presented it to you about a month ago, I did have an error in there where I put all the students, although that would be wonderful. <laughs> it would solve our problem. We wouldn't have to increase the fees. <laughs> you know, um, well, I don't know about that, but um, so I did fix that. And, you know, certainly the revenue, the projection of revenue on the proposed increase goes down dramatically. But, you know, you had asked that I go back and, and rethink it. Um, to be honest with you, my recommendation to you would still be the same to keep it consistent with the other two. And I have a couple of reasons why. It's not just for consistency, certainly. But we have seen um, participation increase more this year. I have talked with Carol. I've talked with Mary Ellen. I did meet with the manager. I actually came down and viewed the school lunch. I looked at the facilities. They're wonderful. They do a fabulous job keeping those facilities sparkling clean, I'll tell you. I was very, very impressed. Um, and, and I looked, you know, basically just observed and, and talked to them a little bit. Did you have um, lunch too? No, no, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking at the same time. Um, but um, certainly the participation is increasing, and I do feel that if we were to increase it by, in other words, in order for us to make an impact revenue-wise substantially, you would have to increase it to such a degree, we might lose all participation. Right. <laughs> we'll be going in the wrong direction, to be honest with you. So I do still feel um, that we, um, you know, have, have the, the, the small increase, which is 25 cents that I originally recommended, 25 cents for the school lunch, going from 225 to 250. And then the regular breakfast increasing by 25 cents, going from one dollar to dollar 25. We are talking about um, having the. I know this sounds funny, but the egg McMuffin breakfast, I guess, has not been instituted here. I think that that, that um, students would like that, and um, so we're talking about see if we can accommodate that with the scheduling. Um, that's number one we were thinking of. The participation is increasing, and then there are a number of other things that we can work on that is going to take some time, but. Um, you know, there are definitely, you know, some issues, you know, I, I have to say that um, 
School lunch programs are very hard to keep in the black, regardless of the school district. And as you do know, um, the general fund has for a number of years been supporting, um, offsetting um, some of the expenses for, for a number of years. And um, so it will be a work in progress, progress and we need to, to a kind of attack it from a, a number of fronts. But I still would recommend that modest increase for now um, as we work through that. And then, then it should be looked at, I think, again next year and, and should be looked at regularly, really. They should be reporting on it regularly, I, I feel, mm -hmm. um, at least every year so that you know, all three school committees know what's going on with their food service programs, um, regardless. And that way you have, you know, the history, continue that trend history so you can see what's going on and keep adding to the years and um, see what's going on year to year, you know, as far as um, improvements and whether or not, again, we need to revisit um, the fee issue also. Okay. Any questions? What is this egg McMuffin? Is it like from McDonald's? We say McMuffin, or is it? Well, they call it. Yeah, we probably shouldn't call it that. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. I believe we but serve it. Like We're not egg serving. Muffin, but no, 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 not okay. McDonald's. But it's made okay. uh, similarly. An egg sandwich is yes. basically what it is. Yes. Okay. Yes. On a muffin. Egg McMorio. Egg Yeah. There you go. There you go. See. Does it have sausage? Sausage and bacon. Well, I don't know. Oh. Do you have a drive-up window? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's against their bylaws. <laughs> no idling. Uh, no. <laughs> and no more projects. <laughs> okay, then. So, down here is the motion that you... Uh, yes, yeah, first. I try to put it there so you don't have to... Motion to approve the increase of the student lunch fee beginning in the 2012-2013 school year from 225 to 250, an increase of 25 cents, and the regular breakfast from one dollar to 125, an increase of a quarter. This increase does not apply to the egg, egg memorial sandwich. <laughs> okay. So do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. Yeah, Anything else to be said? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 the motion? I do. Oh. Oh, thank you. So we actually cover the agenda item summary in addition to the uh, vote. <laughs> okay, at the same time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we have the water testing update. And included in your packet, we do um, we did forward to you an email just so you would see it in writing, coming from um, a gentleman from Whitewater which is the firm that we use with regard to water testing and things of that nature. Um, and as you know, the uh, town meeting did recently approve, and we're, we're very thankful for that, um, some funds to repair the boiler. But certainly we want to look at addressing the water issue if that may prematurely um, you know, ruin a boiler again. So certainly we want to do things in the right order. We are currently working on this. We um, are waiting for a report on the water that actually goes into the boiler. That's what we're talking about precisely, not the drinking water or anything like that. That is absolutely fine. And um, we are having an engineer. Actually, I was expecting him to come today, but I did check with Carol and, and, and Joe, and, and he has, did not arrive today. But they have to, he has to set up a time to come down with Carol and Joe and um, actually look at the situation, have an engineer look at it, along with the water report they currently have, and then make some proposals on what we um, might need to do to address the issue. It could be some filtration of the water going into the boiler. It could require some work actually um, a little bit on the outside. So we need to see how extensive that might be. We don't expect it to be very extensive, but we do need to involve also the Department of Environmental Protection from the state. That's part of it. It's actually required. And once we do receive that, um, we, we would be looking to try to mitigate address that issue um, and then you know proceed accordingly and then as soon as possible thereafter get the boiler repair done okay and DEP I mean once we involve DEP mm. it gets complicated yeah they dictate because, everything because you know, they have to with safety and water and, and it gets complicated yeah yeah. You'll just keep to keep us updated then oh we certainly yeah. will yes okay. and I'm, I'm expecting to hear from this gentleman Shortly. Post haste, yeah. yes, <laughs> or I'll, okay. I'll um, be contacting him too. We really need to get that report, and we need to get the engineers. Um, we need to get that information. We need to get moving on it. So, 
I will be contacting him actually tomorrow. Okay. Question. I didn't hear from him today. So, question? So, if it's a water issue, both boilers that we have would be having problems. There's no, if we have only one boiler that's been damaged, it's probably not, I mean, you're, I think you might be jumping the gun by assuming that it's water, I guess. Oh, we're not just no. assuming. We're not okay. just assuming anything. Well, no, we have some, you know, information that there's could very well be. The we'll see when we the get water. the report. Yeah. We don't know. We're, that's why we're yeah. doing the investigation. We should understand mm -hmm. what the yeah. state of the other mm -hmm. boiler is mm -hmm. at a minimum. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if one has, you know, rotted out from the inside, well, the other one has the same water in it. Yeah. It was actually she suggested when we went to the FAC meeting yeah. by some town officials yeah. that mm -hmm. we check into it as far as the quality mm -hmm. of the water yeah. for the boiler. So exactly. it wasn't a bad that, idea. You're correct. Exactly. Okay. So came from the issue. Right. The one that right. Yeah. Right. I remember. So it's it's worth looking into. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So we don't have a prematurely deteriorated boiler again. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. I'm mean, gonna actually if I, I know it's not um Go ahead. Um, on the agenda, but it is another um, issue. We do, we have received three quotes, and do have three quotes for the intercom system. Mm -hmm. And I did actually have a meeting with the gentleman myself, um, Joe Baldessari and, and Carol, and I was very pleased with his um, presentation, his, his, his materials, his costing, everything. Um, we actually went and looked at the units and everything. Um, the, I did get the prevailing wage sheets for it and subsequently sent them to him to make sure that his quote is, is also including the required, as you know, that's required by Mass General Law, um, prevailing wage. I don't expect any issue with that. Also got a cost on uh, replacing the amplifier, which is also 10 years old. That way we will we, we, we be replacing everything. Um, it should all fall within the $15,000. It was voted um, by the town um, to take care of that, including the amplifier and the clocks. So I'm, we're really moving right along on that. I'm just waiting for confirmation um, from him. We have to contact the telephone company to look um, with regard to connectivity. And um, checked on the batteries, we're all set with that. That was preliminarily, that was gonna be a large cost, but that worked out to be absolutely fine. And he needs to have one of his, um, uh, a gentleman from his firm come down and actually look at things to make sure that the infrastructure, we can't, um, no, 100%. Obviously, they can't look at every single wiring within the walls and everything, but they can do some testing just to make sure that to, you know, see with regard to proceeding. So that is actually coming along. It's come a long way in the past month. So, so I want to let you know about that's that, too. going to happen over the summer, do you think? Oh, we're hoping. We're yeah. hoping. Oh, absolutely. Great. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't see why that, that could not be done. Right. Yeah, it's, it's looking very good. Good. So. I think there's just some of the issues that have been from what you had talked about back in the fall that have been knocking around for a couple of years. Right, this so, was an article that was approved so a couple of done. years ago <laughs> and had not been followed up on, so I, I appreciate it, I appreciate your work. So we'll keep you posted. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Carol, do you have a report for us this evening? I have a, a great deal of appreciation to extend tonight, first to the townspeople for supporting us, as, as Chris mentioned, with the budget this year. I, I, um, the capital plans, the budget, um, you put a lot of trust in us and faith in, in the work that we're doing to come up with a, a fiscally sound budget and um, be responsible. And I appreciate, I want everybody to know how much I appreciate that everything just ran so smoothly that night for us with, with the, all the articles approved for capital plan. So um, I also wanted to thank um, CPAC, our Special Education Parent Advisory Council, who presented their Excellent Educator of the Year Awards at our recent luncheon, um, Teacher Appreciation Luncheon. I did want to mention those folks who received this year's awards, uh, Jennifer Ricard, Rachel Peeney, Deb Ellis, and Molly Nozick were honored by CPAC this year for their work with, and Peter Daly, that's right, thank you, for their work with children, and um, received a, a, a beautiful certificate and also the what was most touching are the letters they receive each year from the parents of these children that are read and are just enough to make you cry which we often do when we hear them because it just means so much to the teachers to to get that appreciation um, so and, and on a larger scale I also want to mention that it is teacher appreciation week this week we had 
a, a beautiful luncheon on Friday sponsored by Link. Um, the volunteers were all there and we were all fed very well and received lots of wonderful gifts and raffle prizes throughout the week. It took a lot of effort and, and folks really put their heart and soul into making this week so special for all of us. And um, I also want to thank my teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week who, who put their heart and soul into their work every day um, at Berlin. We, I just am in awe sometimes of the dedication they have to the children. Um, many people are there well into the late afternoon um, doing work and on phone calls with parents and just doing so much to the best of the, our children. So thanks to all, all my staff um, this week. That was a wonderful luncheon, by the way. Yeah, it was a wonderful mm -hmm. luncheon. Thank was great. you. I also, when Mike had mentioned our last day of school, I also wanted to make note that it is a half day. It's an early release day, so, um, I thought so that was automatic. can plan okay. for that. Mm, um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure I said that. Um, yep. Also, the, the other thank you, um, on Thursday, May 24th, we have our annual Memorial Day uh, ceremony, our, our assembly. This year it's especially... Um, important because we will be dedicating the Vietnam plaque, which is many years in the making. Um, and Ray Ellis has been instrumental. I wish he was here tonight um, to honor him because he's worked so hard to get that in place and has been visiting our school many times these past weeks to measure and um, think about where it's going to go and how it's going to be placed. And he's just done so much for us with that plaque. And it's, it's, it's so impressive to see it. And um, what I also was amazed at today, he, he set up the highway department to come over and, and hang it today. And uh, honestly, that, that plaque is so heavy yeah. that there was probably about seven gentlemen out there lifting that plaque because you have to align it and place it and make sure it doesn't crash to the ground. And it, it was incredible. Uh, um, joint effort. So thanks to the guys from the highway department for helping Ray and our custodians to get that up. So we're great to put the other one of the other ones up previously. But yes, oh my sure goodness. Needs a little help this year. Yeah, 130. I was even enlisting visitors coming into the school, gentlemen who were coming for different to meet with our head custodian earlier in the day to carry it out of his car. And I'd say, what are you doing while you're waiting? Can you just go help <laughs> lift it out of the car? We had everybody was involved. So um, also, just quick reminders, Notathon is this Thursday. That raises money for our band. Um, Can you explain that a little bit? I wasn't sure. The students pledge or their families pledge money per note that the children play, and they do performances. So it's very in individual performances throughout the evening. So And it's a little recital for them. So a lot of fun, right? Um, Link in the, the money that goes to Link. So it comes back to us, so that's great. And um, then we have our Spring Chorus Concert, 7 o'clock Friday, May 18th. And that is at, at BES this year. Um, it is every year, every spring, that's where that's held. What else did I want to tell you? Um, the other quick thing I had mentioned in, in, in the agenda that I want to uh, talk about, the mission statement. We, we finished the statement the, the way we wanted it to read. We do want to present that to the school committee at our at our June meeting along with the handbook. We voted on it as a school council that we wanted that to go forward. We're still working on the vision statement. I think that's going to take a little bit more time. We had a very, very rich discussion on that at our last school council meeting and really um, did a lot of reflecting on where we see the future of our school, what we want it to look like, what we want it to be, and um, talked about the beliefs and values that we hold is important to our school. So it's a, it's a very rich conversation, and um, you're certainly invited. If you have a chance, I can let you know our next date of our meeting. Okay. So you can listen and, and hear what we're talking about during those, during those meetings. So I will bring that to you with uh, the handbook at the June meeting, as well as um, I think a, pretty much a decision about the electronic devices. I had a chance to talk. We had a, a big discussion with Link uh, on last Thursday at our meeting about the ages and we're looking at four through six to allow the devices to come into school for grades four through six and to see how that works next year. Was, five, was it five and six? Five and six yeah. we had with it, and I think I had shared with you that it really was um, not a big issue. We're willing to open it up to fourth grade. We thought the parent community really strongly felt that that was probably a good age to 
end that for now rather than extending it into the early grades. But we also talked about the idea of, of having the, more of those devices available in the school so that families did not feel the need or, or um, had to send them into school, that they were available for children to be able to utilize in the libraries, in classrooms, and also certainly in their in special education we have them and some of the other support areas in school. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm looking at as far as funding those in the future. Just a caveat to that, if, if uh, the handbook for some reason is not ready for the June meeting, can you make sure that we have the discipline section of the handbook ready for presentation mm -hmm. that evening so the school committee can vote that? Because that would be critical for you to operate when you open up school. Yes, and also especially around the work we're doing with PBIS, that we do have a good deal to submit I mean, if else, for that, that piece. At least sure. that piece. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay. Uh, move on to the business items. We've covered the presentation of the energy savings plan. Um, the school lunch fee increase, I believe, we took care of. So we'll take care of the policy JFBB school choice and you've asked that it be a final read if, if it if could the, be. If the committee, uh, it, I think for us to implement it, it, you would have to be a final read. You know, as you know right now, the, the, the policy, the way it has been constructed uh, <coughs> states that if a random draw is necessary for slots, if that that will take place the last week of the current of the current school year, year that you're in. The phone calls that we've been getting from parents, and even that is at the superintendent's office, so I can't imagine what it might be down at the uh, elementary schools uh, or the high school, is that you know, parents really want to know, I mean, s not the third week, the last week of school, and this week, th this year would be the last, uh, the third week in June, almost the last week in June. They really want to know a lot earlier, so my suggestion uh, as I mentioned to the uh, Wilson Committee last night, and then was, we obviously we'll take this up with the region too, is to do it right after the right after town meeting. I mean, that way there we know we have a budget, the budget's been passed, we know we have a staff, we can act them on it, and we should be able to, if we need, this is only for a random draw. I mean, if we need right. a random draw, then right. we do it uh, right away uh, uh, the second the second week in, in, in May. Allow us to do that versus right now it's, it's, just, so, it's just so late in the year. And uh, that would be, I think, helpful to to all of us. Okay. Any questions from the committee? The first one says that by May 1st of every school year, does that give enough time to make the determination and then turn around? That's your drop deadline. If you read it closely, it's that mm -hmm. by May 1st of I every school first. year. Okay. okay, so you can do that earlier than that. Okay. By law, you have to vote, obviously, with whether you're going to withdraw from school choice. Okay. And that okay. the guarantees that you will make that decision, you know, prior to prior to May first, you can make it any time you want. Okay. I mean, February, March, April. So Sorry. this is a previous policy, just making these changes. Exact same policy, except number four, okay. uh, where it reads now that it's the third week in. Uh, well, I'm oh sorry, the last week of the current school year, but no later than July one, and we would strike that, and, and we would say we'll, we'll do it the second week in May. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do I hear a motion to approve the school choice policy? I think you'd have, if, if I may, Madam Chairperson, mm -hmm. I think first you'd have to waive your policy of two reads. Right. Okay, and then come back and then make, make, make the motion to approve this policy. Okay. Do I hear a motion a to waive ride. the first two reads of the school choice policy JFBB? So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And do I hear a policy, or do I hear a, a motion to approve the school, the new school choice policy JFBB with the changes recommended by the superintendent? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, your your policy of JIE on, on pregnant students. Obviously, we've taken this up at the region already. The policy we had in place is against the regulations. <laughs> and in major changes, you cannot deny a student from coming to school if they don't have a doctor's note. So we've changed this to conform with current state law and regulation. 
Okay. And this has been approved at the region? That is correct. Was it, did we do all three reads for that? No, or? we did a first read at the region. Okay, so do you want this? Yeah, this, this is read? not critical. I mean, okay. Yeah. All right. But it should, be, it's, should, it should be taken care of. Okay. So do I hear a motion to approve policy JIE um, pregnant students for, for first read? So moved. Second. Okay, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> uh, your next policy, uh, IHBAA, Special Education Program Observation. Uh, you do have existing policy uh, at all three schools for parents to come in and observe students in the classroom and how that is done in the procedures. Uh, new state law requires we have a separate policy which pretty much mirrors the policy you have now but for special education program observation. Um, so that's a change in master and law under Chapter 71B, Section 3. This is the policy you've already voted at the region that's been vetted out by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Uh, and I would recommend that you uh, adopt this policy for procedures to how to, how to, uh, how to accommodate special education program observation. Do I hear a motion to approve special education program observation policy, uh, IHBAA, for a first read? So moved. Second. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I didn't know if you, uh, just a suggestion, I didn't know if you, under F, you have school choice and enrollment discussion, which is something the building principal has asked to, if she could discuss this evening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to take that now or if you want to, I don't know how long that discussion will go, or if you want to do the Reed Tyler scholarship update first. And get that out of the way, or it's a very quick update. <laughs> we could do that. So, I um, mean, we've received, I believe, about 18 applications. They've been um, distributed to the subcommittee, and we're in process of setting a date to review. And then I believe we're going to have to have a meeting, at least a school <coughs> committee meeting, and I can present the subcommittee would need to come um, necessarily to approve so that we can give out seniors. For what? What is the date of graduation? June second. Whatever. June second. I believe it's the second. Because we usually give them out. <laughs> we give them out to the town. Whatever Sunday is. Right. So we may have need to just. June uh, third. Oh, third. Third. Okay. So, so we need to do. I'm that. sorry. We were just. We were just thinking, um, having we'd have to have a, a meeting to approve their recommendation for the scholarships before Tahanto graduation so that we could get the um, scholarships at graduation. Um, I think it could be a very quick meeting, but it would have to be after your subcommittee meetings. Correct. And we just got them, it takes a little while uh, to Suggestion could be if you could meet before the regional meeting if you're ready. And you could you know, meet 15 mm -hmm. minutes if it's not to Lenta, you can meet 15 minutes before the region. We have time to post that. Uh, you could conduct your business then and then merge into the regional meeting if that's helpful to you. Um, because I think your next your next scheduled meeting of the Berlin School Committee is not until June 13th. Right. So that will put you out. But uh, but I think you could, yeah, we would have time to post that. But obviously for the regional meeting, which is next, next Thursday, we certainly could put it um, <laughs> ahead of that if you want to do that. <laughs> I'll have to check with the subcommittee and get back to you. Is that reasonable? Just yeah, trying to give you options. We'll have to That's all. have an emergency for a meeting. Versus constructing a, a, a whole a, a different meeting. But Correct. A, but that doesn't, we could post that too. I mean, whatever you want to do. That's about it. All right. So why don't you share? This is, a, I mean, a conversation actually started with Carol and I. Well, right. One day we started to talk about, you know, school choice and true school, school choice slots, and it, it actually morphed into a much more complicated conversation. Um, and, and I'll let Carol speak, you know, for obviously for herself, just regarding, I guess, the future direction of Berlin Memorial School in terms of a number of factors. I mean, one is school choice enrollment, which is one, but the other one is just the general impact of enrollment. 
and how enrollment is playing out, not just now, but how enrollment may play out for the next four, five, six, or seven years. Um, so, I mean, it went from one conversation on, on school choice, where originally we started to talk about the numbers of students coming into kindergarten. Uh, the projected enrollment, as you know, for next year is uh, uh, 21, 21 students, count one student being school choice, which two sections breaks down to 10 and 11 students. And we had a conversation about that. And, uh, and then from there, I mean, and obviously looking at, the, at other student-teacher ratios that are happening within the uh, Maryland Memorial School. And, and then we had asked, I think Carol had asked uh, Karen uh, Callahan, her, her secretary, who contacted Ola Weiss uh, to give us the projections for future incoming uh, kindergarten classes. And that's what you have in front of you uh, tonight. So some of this email you have in front of you uh, came from uh, Carol to me with, with the numbers and then in bold, I, those of those are my comments in bold, but as you can see in uh, the 2013-14 uh, school year, we are right now, this is a projection, right now we're looking at 15 children coming into kindergarten. You know, the year after 14, 15, 27, the year after 15, 16, 28. Now these are all subject as we all know. A thousand things could happen between now and then in terms of change and people coming into to the uh, district. I mean, as I said to the Boylston Committee last night, and as I said to the Berlin Committee tonight, I mean, if, if these towns would put sewers in, then you would could throw that out the window, and I'm sure you would see, blah, boom, you know, uh, major major housing construction going up just because of the ideal location of, uh, of both towns uh, demographically, and also the uh, excellent reputation, I, I think, of uh, the schools and the character of, of both those towns. But that not being said, uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of building plans uh, being formulated for either town, but obviously this is Berlin for the town of Berlin that we're aware of right now. So that is something that that uh, you know that, that's going to impact upon upon the educational programs here uh, for the uh, future years. So I'll turn it over to you from here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm this year we've had to reduce uh, the sixth grade to one class because of the number of uh, 21 students that we have in the sixth grade. We lost. So two children so far that we know of with a potential of a third. <coughs> and um, so we consolidated that once again into one class. It seems to be that the direction that we're going in, I'm concerned because we, we do have nine students um, on the waiting list for school choice. And as we talked about the last meeting, I mean, I would, I would request all of them, but I understand, again, we talked about being fiscally responsible, you know, what, what kind of impact that would have to the school if we continue to let that many school choice children in every every year. Um, I'm cons one of the so that would give us ten and eleven, as Mike said. Um, if you look at the numbers that we got from Eloise this year, you see we originally had twenty four children, and that's what we were looking at when we first came to the school choice decision. We made that vote. Since that time, we lost the five five children for various reasons. Some decided not to send their children this year. Some folks went out privately. A variety of things happened. And that's, from what, what my secretary said, that typically happens every year, even looking at the numbers we have for the future years. While it might say 15 children, that could end up being 10. And when, when all is said and done, so it fluctuates that much. Um, one thing that we looked at, if, if we did want to open up school choice slots at all for this coming year, <coughs> is the possibility of moving we have four slots still open for fifth grade, and we have no students currently um, on any waiting list to come into fifth grade. If for this year we were able to move four slots into an opening for kindergarten this year, so that we would have, what would that be? Um, 25. 12. 25. 25 kids. So. 12 and a half, we'll cut one. And a, and a <laughs> half. I, I did very unofficially hear that we might be getting another kindergartner in next year, so we have, you know, we will have 13. Spot, but that's sort of a band aid for the years to come. And, and I'm not, again, as I, I said to, to Chris when we spoke about this on Friday, I'm I do, just am not sure where we're going with all of this and, and what we need to do. We certainly we have 33 of our students right now are school choice already. That would be 37, and then we'll climb. 
Yeah, I, I understand Carol's you know, for, you know, uh, genuine and deep concern you know, for this and, uh, and uh, regarding you know, the very low enrollments and how they can translate into not only staff reductions in the future, but uh, that less students in the classroom. There's, there's a point with the chemistry that involves there regarding social learning as well as interactive learning with students uh, could, negative, could be negatively impacted. And, uh, and I agree with that. I, I, I think it's a very valid uh, concern. Uh, on the other hand, I know if I just run some, run some numbers, which I've run some numbers for you, you, know, for you and, and I've, I've given them to Carol too, is, you know, I mean, sometimes the, this is my, what I hear is sometimes the school committee or community members are concerned with the fact that, you know, about subsidizing the town of Berlin or the taxpayers subsidizing, in a sense, school choice. That is not the case now. Completely not the case now. We are sprinkling kids in here, and they are actually enhancing the programs that we have now, as we all know, with the significant amount of money that we've applied to school choice, from school choice to operate the Berlin budget this year, which will add a tremendous savings to the, uh, to the town the town of Berlin, you know, for municipal government. And I think that was done very, very wisely this year. But, um, you know, just looking at, a, a, I guess, a mathematical algorithm from going out from now till, till let's say, the next six years, I mean, if we took in students in the K this year, and I'm looking at, at nine students this year, and next year in Roman slow, if we take in nine more, and then we, we, we look at that over a five, six year period, now, I mean, we, we know, we, we We'd be taking in like another 45 school choice kids. Add to the current population. This is over time, okay. And then you the look at stays low, right? Right. Your regular enrollment. Yeah, stays yeah. Stays that's this is full of. Uh, this is not right. Precise at all. This is just as things stand <coughs> as of today, and it, it encompasses a, a lot of things that that we know right now. Things could change radically, but you know, you you take a look at that. Um, you took at the incoming revenues that you would get from school choice using that large number of kids. Maybe you're talking $375,000 worth of revenues, but if you're looking at the teaching staff, it probably uh, cost you um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, what did I say, uh, another 426000 to maintain that, that you would not have if you got to a point where you were actually condensing classrooms over time. Hmm. And of course, your percentage of school choice population is going to get higher. I mean, you know, much higher. It would probably be operating around 40, 50 percent. And then I think those concerns about subsidizing school choice are you know, pretty good. Yeah, it's going to be valid. Yeah. I mean, you know, as far as that's concerned. So, so it's a balance. It's definitely a balancing act. I mean, there are concerns, I think, on both ends. And I think, and I, I do agree with Carol 100 percent about some of the concerns she has you know, regarding social and academic interaction. Um, and it's you know, just about, it's good, always had good to have two sections. Sometimes students and teachers don't click, you know what I mean? These things do happen, and it's nice to have another option where you know, someone can go um, you know, someplace else. But if I'd be disingenuous as a superintendent if I didn't point out to you all the factors that are there to do due diligence regarding just how that might play out you know, over time. It may not. And maybe there's a happy medium of doing some of the mixing and matching. You've done some of this mix, mixing and matching already, and I think you've done it very well. And we've benefit, benefited uh, from it. Uh, you know, regarding uh, you know school choice, we've been applied to keep the keep the positions we have now. If we did not have that school choice, then you would probably be in a much more serious rip situation. I mean, uh, barring overrides, which I think we all realize you know, that the Hunter project. Are DOA on arrival, so uh, so it has worked out well, I think, with the community uh, as a whole. But those are the concerns, you know. So it, it talks about the future direction of it. I think that's what we were talking about later on, saying, "Well, where are we going? <laughs> you know, where are we going we, with this whole thing?" Crystal ball about the uh, student enrollment. Yeah. Um, but I did I did um, mention it to a community member I ran into. At post office, and um, she reminded me that there is in the next couple of years a mix, possible mixed use going to go in down at Riverbridge, where they may have some housing like apartments and that kind of thing, which they figured would would have more children that would be going to the elementary school. Um, but there I, isn't a big, huge boom. I heard double the town's population. I don't know if there's any 
Well, they assured us that it would not be double, at least not double the Berlin Memorial School population. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as far as children. <laughs> no. Um, but I had forgotten about that until I ran into her and she mentioned it. Mm -hmm. um, it's an issue. It's, it's, it's an issue you, you're definitely going to have to struggle with. I mean, uh, uh, is any, and particularly if you look at, you know, that, that 13, 14 school year with, you know, and once again, that can all change, but with the possibility of projection of 15 students coming in. Yeah, it looks well, like next year might be a tough, might be a tough you know, decision. That, that would be a difficult year for the 13, 14 uh, school year. Right. But I think what Carol's proposing tonight is that in the fifth grade with the four slots you have that you would in a sense, give those slots up. Yeah. That's what you're saying, and you reallocate those to the uh, to kindergarten. To K. This way, we're not adding any more school choice numbers, but we're moving them, shifting mm -hmm. them to where there is right. a desire and a need for. Because I didn't, I <coughs> mentioned to Carol. I said, and I thought it was <coughs> my perception, <coughs> just my perception, that I know when we reviewed school choice back in February or March, I forgot what month, and we actually calculated the number of school choice children that were in the district that. The committee seemed to be maybe taken a little aback by the, I don't know, that was my perception as to how many kids we actually had on the, on the well, school choice Well, it was time, 12 you know. forever, never, never, never. And then all of a sudden now, you know, it is, it's a lot higher. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be very <coughs> careful with this because we're not only committing to these students, but we're also committing to their siblings, which Which, to this point, yes, we have been very Well, you are and you are. I mean... When we, not not right. by law. I mean, I'm just right. I'm just read the law. You you're not committed to them unless you open up a slot. Right. Okay, you don't right. have to take them in. Just want to make it very very up to, clear. Up till now, yeah. we've been yeah. very fortunate. Oh no, I understand yeah. that. Why? Right. You know, I mean, I completely understand. To. Just the point of law. Mm. So. Couple of questions out there. Good. Maureen, you have a question. I just had a question about <coughs> if they automatically school choice to Berlin Memorial. Do they automatically get school choice up to Tahanda? That is correct. Yeah. It's the sending yeah. school for Berlin. So they are accepted. So once they're at the accepted elementary, here, they automatically. Yep. Mm -hmm. They become ours. Mm -hmm. They're our students. And we're responsible for them 100%. Mm -hmm. Through, through special high needs, school. Special needs. They develop special needs in the future or whatever. We treat them like our own. Yeah. So, yeah, so you mentioned being fiscally responsible is one of the aspects of looking at this. From an education perspective, you know, how does it, how does the mix work? Or is it completely transparent to the students, you know, do the out of town kids have their own kind of group? Are their skill levels adequate when they come in? Are there other impacts, that you, you know, while we're talking about this financial here, and I, I would assume that there's other factors involved. And you know, does Berlin Memorial become, oh, that's a school filled with 50% uh, of kids from out of town. That's going to you know, make locals not want to go there even more. Um, oh, don't start any rumors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was all <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> right. Well, people wouldn't come into school of choice, I just want to say publicly, they would not even be considering school of choice, those parents. parents that usually off the school of choice are very are very interested in their children, very invested in their children. Yeah. So when they're gonna make a decision to not have their children go to their home their home school for whatever particular reason, they're gonna shop around. And I and, and, it, and, and I particularly and at the at the younger oh, level. At the elementary level, absolutely I mean at all I, levels. It might be levels. different at the high school level, middle high school level, but I think at the elementary school I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, they're looking when they see you know <coughs> they see and they like it. They've become We've had some very dedicated school choice parents who've gotten involved, and you know, the, the, the PTO, and, and oh, extremely involved in the school and volunteering and making. Sh I think you know that's usually the case at the elementary school. Um, it could be just a little different at the high school. I have not seen it at the high school, no, because uh, the bus stop for students for drop off school choice is at the bottom of the street, so <laughs> so. I, <laughs> So they're all he there. at the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> bus stop king. You know? yeah. We're having snow tomorrow, a snow day tomorrow. I don't know. It's the inside scoop at the bus stop. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> but no, I've found them to be very well accepted. Uh, very, very well accepted. And these are sometimes children from very different, 
different from the typical racial or ethnic or religious background that we have in uh, generally that would go to our schools from Berlin and Boston and I think it's been a very enriching uh, experience in terms of the diversity of the school there and I think it's about a big benefit and they've been readily, readily accepted. Oh yeah, into, yeah. I think the kids in both of the schools, very, very Toronto well. and Berlin, are always very accepting of uh, the outside kids. You know, tell me yeah. if I'm wrong. But I think for us, it's been a very positive experience. Yeah. 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 yeah I do too. I mean, there's certainly that's they they come right they integrate well in the schools and mm -hmm. they're mixed and they really because they come from several different towns. Some of them may know each other from past schools, but not necessarily um, as the case. And, all, and the other thing you mentioned, Bill, too, we, we really can't um, uh, is it discriminate based on the, the profile of the child coming in. Well, you know, I didn't say yeah. you could, I you wasn't could sure choose. That I just, does that. it have a, an effect? That's all oh, I asked. Oh, an effect right. on that. <laughs> right. So, is there any other questions? You mentioned that you looked at it in Boylston. What is, is it the same trend you're seeing there? For? Like kindergarten? Um, just kindergarten. Did you look at? The years to come for them? Uh, at the kindergarten level, yeah, their, their student teacher ratios at, at Boylston are uh, higher than yours, but not, I mean, they're operating between, well, I was just there last night, like four, 14 to 19. The school committee last night uh, wants to keep it at 19 or under. That's what they're really aiming for. So when they did school choice last night, they really. Uh, we're doing it again. I've done it once, but they looked, took another look at it again, and uh, they really want to limit the, their numbers to, to 19. For some reason, they were operating under 25 school choice students in the last two, three years, and then last year they went down to 12. Uh, I don't know why, because they have applications up the wazoo, I mean, for, for applications for the school choice. Then uh, they have gone back into this year, and they, they're going to bring more students in. Their kindergarten right now, uh, their full day tuition kindergarten next year will be 20, no, 16 and 17. I'm trying to wrap my head around two schools now. And then they have a, their part time uh, kindergarten, because some parents don't want to go full time, uh, three days per week. Those are currently nine. So there was a proposal on the docket last night to eliminate um, that teacher and just assign those three kids into the full day programs. But, after a lot of discussion, we decided we would keep that the same. We'd still made some budget, some personnel reductions. Hard, very difficult, painful <laughs> reductions last night at, uh, at, at Boston Elementary, but that's where their kindergarten is right now. Now, in the future, their uh, incoming classes are projected to be uh, stable, but not growing. So they're about, the, it's the same. As a matter of fact, next year they're gonna have a dip. They got 31 kids projected for their kindergarten next year. So they've got, you know, two teachers teaching full time because there's this tuition based in the afternoon and they'll be that will be a very difficult decision next year as to whether they're going to keep 2.60 getting out of teachers because they're only having right reporting right now 31 kids coming in so they're experience line by the way this is not just limited to uh, Berlin and Boylston uh, and a superintendent's meeting before across the straight state demographically lots of school districts are seeing mm -hmm. major decline in enrollment not necessarily so much through the charter schools or school choice, just birth rates are just mm -hmm. down. You know, and you're not getting, you know, kids, uh, those projections coming in for, for future years. And that's happening. Some of the, the, the schools out in, uh, in the western part of the state have huge reductions in their enrollment. Not now, mm -hmm. but we're forecasted for the next, the next three or four years. Because that changes from town to town depending okay. upon, you know, the demographics and building and, and what's going on. How many students was Tahanto built for? The new one? Uh, I don't know what the capacity, what the student capacity is. I don't know. And don't ask, don't dare ask me what square footage is because I have no clue. Someone said, well, you're kidding. I said, no, I don't pay attention to square footage. <laughs> I don't. I'm going to say it was up to 500 or something. 550. Yeah. Really? Yeah, 5, 550. So I guess my, my thought process is you consider that Boylston is taking a conservative approach to school choice. So I would be concerned if they were being more aggressive, then we would no. need to be more conservative. No, but they, they do not want to be the same caught in a situation where the community uh, are going to um, accuse them of subsidizing okay. through tax, the taxpayers' funding 
school choice uh, school school choice program. <laughs> They're doing it um, just like you, maybe even more so. Where they're just sprinkling kids in here and there. I mean, they got a they have a bigger base to deal with, right. and so they're already operating with what the lowest student teacher ratios would be about 14. So most of them are operating at a higher level. They don't have the same acute issues you have here in in Bruins, but they're doing the same thing. They're, they're sprinkling them in where it makes sense to augment the program, where they're not going to have to hire you know additional personnel. Uh, or things of this type of nature where the percentage of school choice students are going are going to arise a lot. I mean, like I said, right now they're, they had 12 next year with everyone that they put in. I don't know, maybe they might wind up with maybe 25. You know, I don't have those numbers in front of me, so I don't want to be quoted on that. But, uh, but no, they're, they're doing the same thing. So they're not on a school choice campaign. But I, I think it's reflective of their student-based population. Their overall population in the community is comparable to what they are doing. It's just the decisions that we do make are something to hard to will have to live with. Right. That's something that I, I think over the years I've always hoped that um, the superintendent could do it all, you know, all encompassing the school choice slots. I mean, as far as looking at Berlin and Boylston, make you know, I know a lot of changes happened in the kindergarten, but eventually they all are going to go to Tahanto where you want a certain size class too. And um, I mean, even Carol talking to the principal of Boylston Elementary, when you make your decisions about school choice slots to request, I think that we're talking we're, about it together is a good idea. And as you know, we're not even close to filling out school choice slots at the We didn't change them at all this year. Right. Because we still have slots to go. There you go next year. We have the building open. <coughs> good. Good. One good. I hope so. Yep. I always loved having a small classroom, and I know there are the social issues that go along with that. But really, a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention, that small-town family, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I think that's why a lot of people really love our school system. We're so dedicated to it. But it seems like there's a bigger conversation. There's a question, I think, that you're looking for us to answer, but in my opinion, this is a bigger conversation, and I'd like to hear more parents and people in town, how do they feel? Would they rather see more kids coming in, us opening up more slots? Are they happy with the, the smaller classrooms? I, mean, I think that's something we would like to hear from more people. Mm -hmm. They said to some of the uh, selectmen in the other town at the time that we were concerned about some of the school choice slots, I guess my final parting break was, well, show me the dough. That's right. If you want to run yeah. these kind of comprehensive programs right. that you're running, and you want, and you have these unfilled mandates, financially unfilled mandates that we're operating under, um, I mean, the ELL mandate coming out, and, and superintendents have told the commissioner two weeks ago in a meeting with him, and did a meeting with him, and I was there, saying you need to. This community is like ours, and uh, Joe Sawyer was there from Shrewsbury, did a great job explaining it from Shrewsbury. You know, what do we have in the district? Two hundred kids. In, in ours, um, one potential. One potential. But what we're, we're, we're required to do with this new paperwork coming out, and the people we have to have trained, and the designation we have to have is just absolutely unbelievable, you know, for this school system that I include that in Boylston and the Hunter. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand why they're doing it, but it, so we just, we just give us a waiver. Right. Mm -hmm. So for this evening's discussion. Uh, so, so, Carol, just the specific proposal is, yes, is to drop the four slots of grade five and put them in the K. And shift them to K. Four, four slots? Mm -hmm. the, the four slots four that are plus are, one are open in. Well, that, uh, the, one, the one is already was voted on. That was a sibling of a student that's already at EMS. Mm -hmm. So one was already placed there. When we voted the last time. I guess no more. Are you looking to put five slots into kindergarten? One from second and four from fifth? Or just the four from fifth? The others we voted on. No, she's asking the the, the one slot is still open in the oh, second alone. grade. You want to leave that alone? Yes, I'd leave that one alone. Okay. Okay. So that, I'd leave that slot alone. It's just the four slots that are open in fifth grade, for fifth grade. 
I would like to shift those over to kindergarten. We have and we have no nobody who's applied for the fifth grade slot at this time. Okay. The only thing I foresee is that if these are oldest children, some of the nine that have to be chosen to become the school choice, that there will be, I mean, next year is obviously not an issue. The enrollment stays down as low as 15. Um, but there generally are siblings. So in future years, I mean, I, that's why I think it's a good idea to compromise with four rather than nine. Because I think then you're going to be talking about siblings in a couple of years of that student. And you don't like to split up families. And I know we don't have to um, accept a sibling I mean so but it is nice to keep the families together otherwise you may lose the one in the upgrade if they decide to go elsewhere but you're not asking for nine you're only no. asking for four no I was but I, I've given up that fight okay <laughs> thank trying. you I kept, kept trying. palpitations week after week I say to my but I want nine say no. right so this is sort of like a compromise not yeah. well no compromise, I'd say no I said I projected the reaction from the committee would be no. <laughs> Palpitations. <laughs> so, and actually, we're not even changing the number of slots we're adding, and we've already voted on this number right. of slots, so we're just mm -hmm. moving it. So it's a win win. Okay. But would it, you need to move any aids or have increased aids in the kindergarten grade? Is this? No. No, no, no change in staff. So, how many are there aids in the kindergarten now? There are two kindergarten teachers. Right, two full time kindergarten teachers and two full time aides. Carol, did you have a question? I was just curious, Carolyn, you probably have said this before, but how do you decide where are the nine? Is it it's a lot. It goes to a lottery. It goes to a lottery. It's not by application. Yeah, we did talk about that last time. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions about that. You know, they keep coming up from time to time, not just in Berlin, but all over the place, you know, regarding school choice. And when you get into more applicants and you have slots for, it's random draw. And uh, unless it's a sip involved, and that's, that, that's differently. And there's absolutely no preference for employees of the town in any capacity whatsoever. You can't put any preferences on any of that. That always comes up as a I get that every year from, a, from a, got it again today from someone else, you know, that felt that was a preference for that. And there isn't. Yeah, it's all discriminatory. You can't do that. So ideally the way the, the way it is is you have a student, a master roster, the student say, okay, Carol Bradley's number one, okay, Courtney's number two, Mike DeBoe's number three, you take them, put three clips of paper, put them in a hat of witnesses, draw them out, and then do you run out of slots? We use a table random dump as well to get the events. And they were stressed about it. I had to do the lottery over at the preschool. And uh, oh gosh, they made a mistake and almost made me drive back to Tahanto to do it over again. <laughs> so they're very strict and they're very good about it. Um, well, should be. It's Should fairness. Be. Yeah. Okay. So, do I hear a motion? I move we adjust the four slots in fifth grade school choice right. to changing the school slots, the number of them. Right. Probably to pay Paul, so to speak. Right. Probably a bad analogy. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This way they cannot be for the puppet show for the kindergarten in early, early June 1st. It's actually, so I want to make sure all my new folks are able to attend that and get to meet the teachers. And they're, they're I, have to, I have to say, I've seen the, the notices, the weekly notices about the notice on, and I was, you know, when it wasn't, and I'm glad you elaborated on it. I'm thinking, what are they writing notes to each other? I don't oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, it makes sense. So when is the puppet, puppet show? June 1st. Okay. Incoming kindergarten. Families and well, that's nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then they have the, the present kindergartner, the hosts and hostesses, and they greet them and watch the show with them, and show them their kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. If I can get this the lottery done, the draw done, then they can be part of my experience. Well, I have to say the preschool that I, when I helped with the preschool uh, lottery was 
it was so, they're so cute. They're so cute and vintage. Uh, all right. I think we've covered the business items. And public school committee comments. Public. here who hopes to win the election on Monday <laughs> Monday night. Right, Mickey? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be and careful, it's like the firm. You can't leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, apparently you can't. <laughs> um, and I didn't know whether we needed to talk about meeting dates. Um, Angela, she, she, I talked to her this afternoon, and she did say that Wednesdays are good, but only through till what September? Mid, mid September. I have a conflict on Wednesday nights. Oh, joy! Yeah. But I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave either. What are you? <laughs> but uh, but speaking with Ruth earlier too, it's ideal to have consistent dates. So I guess I was just wondering if um, you know. Start in the next school year or whenever they want to bid, like set Thursdays. Thursday, for example. I think here is a good day for postings um, rather than Wednesday. So we keep it here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how Thursday okay works. Right. Thursdays is fine with me, too. So we just try to avoid having two school committee meetings in one week if we can. Right. The workload for the office is just through the roof. Was quite a get tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know whether we, we could probably put that on the June agenda to actually talk about it, or we could. Um, my my suggestion would be uh, that when you come on board, is maybe to have that conversation and set those region meetings first. They tend to be the most complicated ones to set, and then I think the you elementaries know, tend to be a little bit easier. Okay. Um, and uh, you, got, you got plenty of time to do it too. Okay. Um, but next month, it'll be a Wednesday, and that's okay. That'll work. Okay. And we'll just definitely figure that out the next meeting if we can, or the, or the region meeting. And yeah, I think it'd be a good place to take it up. Yeah. Right. Should put it on the region agenda too. Okay. Um, uh, just a quick update, I did go to the FAC meeting this Tuesday. Um, Dennis Fairbay has been voted as the new chair for FAC after many, many years. Richard being the chair, he said, that's it, I'm done. Really? Can I have his chair? <laughs> <laughs> you can have his actual chair, <laughs> but Dennis got his chair. take a reservation off his seat. <laughs> Um, just to let you know, just to let the committee know, and I did mention that there is a town officers meeting on May 24th to talk about Highland Commons mitigation. So, if um, seven o'clock. So, if um, at that point it would be Angela and Ruth, you're probably welcome to stick your head in if you want. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what was the date? The 24th, it'll be, yeah, May 24th. There's a lot of things going on May 24th. You said the um, Memorial Day program, too. And Nadine will be in the vicinity that day, too. Um, I think that was about it. We just sort of um, rehashed the town meeting. Um, I, I think maybe it might be to Nadine's advantage, you would probably agree that we maybe have a discussion with the town moderator or something to make sure that you know Berlin does its school business at the beginning of the That would be the, nice. The I mean if either meeting. either or uh, right. uh or historically has put their the vote town vote at the last article of the uh, of the evening. And uh, that would be helpful. You know, and particularly if you get a night where you have something that, that's going to be complicated, you know, it's going to require a lot of time. Right, can't be two places at once. I mean, it's just split, up, as that, uh, you know. split you guys up. And, yeah, uh, but like I was saying, sometimes I can know. speak to things. No. Uh, exactly. And sometimes. Yeah, and it really is good to have I think if it's money, right. you know, if it's money matters. You know, yeah. It's good to be together and things like that. I, I did try to address this with selectmen a few years ago when there were some different selectmen in the. Um, 
really the you know, the town wanted to budge. We happened to have a meeting um, at Tahanto with t both the town's selectmen representation, and, but they said they'd just sort of work it out that evening as far as trying to put one town's things first and one town's things second. But we haven't had the conversation again since then. So well, that's something I think we could remind the town fathers, so to speak. You know, at the beginning of the year, um, in case of special town meetings, and I can certainly put that on my agenda for uh, to discuss with Nadine just to say, you know, remind them, let's, let's right. you know, to have those. You never just don't know how fast town meetings going to go. Yeah. Right. You know, no, because uh, Boyles and bundles more articles at the beginning than you do. And when they mm -hmm. go for their town vote, they're not splitting that town budget up or you're voting it by sections. Mm -hmm. They don't. But on the other hand, then on some of the things they do, they do differently than you, that takes a lot. It, it just depends on what you run into. Right. Usually we're pretty lucky that, you know, one town or the other may have something controversial, but not both. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is, it's troublesome for the superintendent and business director to try to get... To Twelve minutes from Twelve minutes. Did you get a police escort? <laughs> no, I was looking for him, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my rearview mirror, too, saying, oh, boy, this will be the I night. I was too worried the about ticket. the Berlin and Wilson guys. Jeez. Those mistakes could be a tough one to talk your way out of. Well, <laughs> Well, and we and I think the committee did fine here in Berlin, and um, I, my heart just went through my roof when there was a, a, a community member who stood up and wanted to ask a question after I made the motion for the roof. But fortunately, it wasn't. It was to do with free cash and not the roof because I, <laughs> I don't think I could answer questions about the roof, and I know the bind that the Boylston members probably had it oh, at yeah. the Boylston yeah. meeting oh, yeah. about yeah. their roof. Yes. So. Yes. They were very happy to see me. So <laughs> I'm sure very lucky yeah. we very were happy to see that me. Yeah. Not, yeah. We're very lucky that, um, mm. you know, we've had, got a supportive group in mm -hmm. the town meeting, too. So. Um, that was really it. That was all my comments. Um, uh, future agenda items. Um, we said handbooks. Is your approval plan in the fall? In the fall, okay. okay. Else, the, okay. Oh, the mission statement was coming in June. Okay. okay. Do you have anything else? Just the scholarship update. Right. The scholarship update might come even before the June meeting. Right. Mm. right. Put it down just as future. Yep. And then the meeting dates. And meeting dates, okay. Ms. Carol, we need handbooks. Yeah. Okay. She said, in, you know, let us know if you have handbook things ahead of time or Oh, no. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there is one more thing that is on the agenda. No reason why we had to come oh, that's one more very time, sweet. Nikki, to thank you so you much. You have to do that. Thank you, you so much. I tried that. to hold them, but they insisted. Don't get them a prize. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting well, nothing. Uh, thank you so much for your again oh, for three thoughtful. years. Very and very sweet. Mike, Mike really had a lot to do with this. So should I open it now? Yeah. Mike had a lot to do with it. Should I really open it now and turn the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! I thought it was a fishing reel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Thank you all. This is very sweet. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. You made it three I'm years. all red. I don't normally get red. <laughs> thank you. Yes, well, it was a pleasure to serve with all of you because we're all just really wonderful people and so dedicated to the students and the families and the girl. And it's, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. And I'm glad to get to know all of you. You too, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. I can show up. Can he gives it up. He has to take it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And, um, thank you. I think the last thing on the agenda is an executive session, a hopefully quick one. Yes. Uh, to discuss strategy and preparation for negotiations with non union personnel. Um, so uh, I would ask. For someone to make that motion to go into executive session for that purpose. To move to only to open only to, only to um, return to regular session to um, adjourn. Adjourn. Yep.
Uh, my last motion. So moved. Okay, and a roll call vote. Nikki? Aye. Chris? Aye. Aye. Okay. Angela? 